Hey viewers, once again, you are most welcome to Real Life Talk. Thank you so much for your support. Thousand kisses to all of you, our viewers, who has been very supportful. God bless you so much. Today, I have got a wonderful guest with me. Believe you me, you are going to be blessed. I want you to stay at, to the end of this video. I have my guest with me today. She is passionate. She is really passionate. She has passion for women feeling good and looking after ourselves. And I think right now that's what we all need. She's got some stuff to show us, but I want her to introduce herself and why she started this business. Today is all about entrepreneurship, empowering us and encouraging us. Without wasting my chat, please, would you like to introduce yourself to our wonderful viewers who has been a blessing with Real Life Talk. You are most welcome to Real Life Talk today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Rena Lee. Um, I am a mother of six. I'm 42. I'm a divorcee. And I have two businesses, as you said. I'm an entrepreneur. Um, and how it came about, and also, mm. more importantly, mm. I'm a Christian. I love Christ. And everything yeah. I do, I give glory and honour and praise to him. Praise before God. Before and after. That's good. So everything, before I set the table, before I do the creams, I pray over it. Just so that the blessing that he's given me mm. is poured out into the creams, That's you know. Right. That's and right. And it will bless other people. Mm. Um, how it came about. Ooh, isn't that a story? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's a long one. It's, it's a long story, but I'm gonna stay to the end mm -hmm. and hear this story. Yes, yes. Um, basically, my backstory is I came from a DV background, so I was in a domestic violent um, marriage, and God allowed me to get out of it. Um, I lived with my grand for a little bit, and she was elderly. So we was doing all these things to mm. kind of get, allow her to kind of have a send off mm. that was peaceful for her. Mm. She didn't have to worry about anything. I slipped into a depression, um, really bad, really bad depression. But as you have kids, I was pregnant with my sixth child, going to uni and looking after my gran, looking after my children. And going to um, uni. And going to uni. And pregnant. And pregnant. Right. Okay. Yes. So I was doing all of this. So the depression, no one saw because it was just constant, constant, constant. My days rolled into one and I'm just doing and doing and doing. Um, my grand had asked me to do a couple of things for her, which involved finance. And she allowed me to take over that mm. for her. Mm. Needless to say, my depression came through full force after I had my child and that went into spending money spending money that i had spending money that my gran had unfortunately Ooh. that went downhill well majorly downhill majorly a lot but of money a lot of money a lot wow. of money and to say oh gosh to say that it was catastrophic mm. is an understatement Wow. It affected everybody. People that I didn't even think of, mm. it affected. And to be honest, it shouldn't really have affected them mm. because they weren't really in my grand's life, mm. but it did. Oh, and unfortunately, I'm going to be as blatant as I can. Mm. It's life. It does happen. This is things real life. like that happens. And sometimes we think, ah, oh, things like that's not going to happen to me. Hmm. I could never. I would never. Do you know? Mm. And then when it does happen to you, you're like, oh, my, my gosh. gosh. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do? Yeah. And when I say I cried, I cried out to God. I cried out to God because I've got kids. And police were involved. The court system was involved. I was looking at a stretch. Wow. And I said, God. It's only you that can get me out. Mm. But where I was mentally, I was prepared to go in. I was prepared to go in and not see my children. That's how far down the hatch of depression I was. I just, I needed to, I needed to block everything out. I didn't want to have nothing to do with 
anyone. I just wow. thought, I'm worthless. And God said, no, you're not. He said, no, you're not. And I'm trying not to well up there because yeah. the story is just like, oh. yeah. And I remember sitting in the dock, mm. looking at the, tape, the, the, the door mm. for me to go through. And the judge said to my solicitor, she's not going nowhere. She was a vulnerable person that got put in a vulnerable predicament mm -hmm. with no support. Mm. Yes, she did this terrible thing, but she's going to go out and she's going to do um, community service. No time spent in jail. Only God. Wow. Only God. If I got into debt with it, you would understand, but I'm for time constraints, yeah. I'm not. Yeah. But it was only God because wow. I was looking at at least two to three years in prison. In prison, and okay, good behavior, year and a half. I don't know. I don't know the system, but when I was talking to the probation officer, mm. they were looking at me like, "How?" Because people that's done less than this gets more than what you would have got. Wow. And I said, "It's just God," and I just was like, "God." I give you glory and I give you thanks. I had to let out the most biggest praise I could ever do wow. in my home when I got home. Inside me, I was just elated, but I was elated and deflated because mm -hmm. I just thought I should be in prison. That's where I need to be. Yeah. You know, I don't deserve to be out here. I don't deserve to have my children around me. I don't deserve for my children to continue loving me. I don't deserve for this, this and that. Because look at the things that I've done, you know. But God said no. I've How long did better. this go on for? Um, to be honest, the whole thing from in terms of the police interaction mm. and the court date, mm. that was April 25th, which is my birthday. Mm. I had to go into the police station mm. and give a, a, a statement, a statement mm. which was the most harrowing thing. Mm. I could not stop shaking. I could not stop, I, I don't even know how I even managed to get through it. Wow. But, and then I got to court November the 17th. So not long, ten, mm. six months. It took six months. Wow. And those six months were horrible because I had to involve yeah. That social six months services. would feel like six yes. years. Yeah. yeah, you think yeah. it's not going to interact with no one, but it does because you have children. You've got to speak to the school. You've got mm. to let the school know. Mm. You've got to speak to your children because, unfortunately, I was in the paper as well. Unbeknownst to me, I was in the paper. My picture everywhere. 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 Jesus. So, and on the internet, the, the, the news, news articles on the internet as well. So, it was horrible. It was a really horrible time. Um, school had to inform. Social services I had to inform. I... Everyone. Do you know what? I'm just overwhelmed. You know, sometimes I sometimes I just thank God for real life. Mm -hmm. That when we talk about the real things, these are some of the things. Yeah. When somebody is telling you the real stuff they mm -hmm. have gone through. Those of you who have watched my previous um, videos, mm -hmm. you can see where I'm coming from mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. Viewers, it's a blessing to have you, but unfortunately, we have to stop here. We will continue this series. It's a long series, so fasten your bells and hear this. And after this, I'm sure some of you will know what to do with yourselves in terms of loving God more. Mm -hmm. In your life mm -hmm. god bless you so much thank you i really appreciate thank you. sharing your story with us my pleasure yeah god bless you so much we viewers thousand kisses to all of you bye for now